These choices are not left up to the parents. If the government doesn't give them permission, they are not allowed to start their business. They're, they're not allowed to do that. The Chinese government feeds their subjects a bunch of junk. And you've seen the videos of the, the men and the women marching lockstep, government knows. They are able to trace that and track that. Greetings, consent-based creatures. I was unable to get a show out this week, and I thought it would be cool to allow other content creators the ability to give us messages that they thought were important for us to hear on this channel. And my good friend Shepard has done just that for us this week. So without further ado, Shepard, take it away. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the reasons, the nine top reasons, I would say, that I do not like the Chinese government. And it is 2024, and there's a lot of tension going on. Been watching it for a couple of years now. And, you know, as the Chinese economy and, and the nation grows bigger and stronger, and the United States is headed into a, this decline that it's been in for many years, and it's getting worse, uh, there's a, a point that many people say in the next two years to 10 years uh, that we'll cross. There'll be a, a time that in the in the graphs, the United States will no longer be the, the biggest, most powerful country in the world. We'll swap places with China. U.S. dollar will no longer be a reserve currency. I don't know if all this is going to happen. But right now, there's a lot of sentiment about the bad things about China. And of course, when I say China, you can't, uh, you can't, give a name of a country and then say that the same thing is true of all the people there. So maybe you could say a country is the same as the nation or the government or, you know, whatever it says on the paycheck that a government employee gets. I, I don't know, but I'm just going to say the Chinese government. Uh, that's how I'm going to think of this. So I'm going to talk about the nine things that I most dislike about the Chinese government. Did you know that in China, the top 1,000 government officials have a net worth that's more than five times, that's 500% higher than the average Chinese citizen? Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Like, aren't government employees supposed to be the servants, the public servants, they call them? How can they pretend in China that they are government servants if the servants, on average, have a higher net worth than the the master of the servant, the um, the the person for whom the servant works, the the general citizen. No, I call BS. That's ridiculous. Shame on the Chinese government for that, for giving themselves such fat rewards. Whether it's them or whether it's the the crony capitalists who who give them some extra treats because they are selected for special favors for contracts or whatever. Uh, long story short, that's that's pretty ridiculous and sad and disgusting, and I don't like it. And another thing I don't like about China, the Chinese government is that they have this system in place where the government knows best and they dictate what kind of uh, medical treatment the children should get and, and whether or not they should go to the, the school, the public school, which they are, they actually have a compulsory schooling system in China where the children are actually required, even if parents don't want them to, they are required by dictate, by Communist Party dictate, to go to the Chinese government schools. And I'm sure there's some private school options for the wealthier people, but by and large, they have to do that. These choices are not left up to the parents of the children, whether they should go to private schools or public schools or be unschooled or homeschooled or whatever. And that, uh, shame on you, Chinese government, shame on you. You, you can't even pretend to care about the freedom of your people if you have that attitude and that dictate toward your subjects. Unbelievable. Disgusting. And speaking of disgusting, one of the most personal things in a, in a human being's lifetime is the choice to, to get together with another person, a romantic partner, and, and decide, commit to spending the rest of your life with that person. Getting married is what I'm talking about. In China, and this is throughout the whole country, a man and a woman, or I don't know what their stance is on, on gay marriage or whatever, but a traditional marriage, a man and a woman have to go to the local government, to the party office, and they have to ask permission. They have to fill out an application. They have to get written permission before the government will recognize that they're married. Zero freedom. Disgusting. This is a personal matter. 
This should be between the the couple. They should be able to just sign a paper or have an attorney write it up or go to a notary public or whatever their version of that is. It's it's disgusting lack of freedom in China. Speaking of having to get permission, if an entrepreneur, let's say somebody in China just has an idea, they want to start a business, they want to make something happen, they're in one of the big cities, they can't just go and look for a place to rent, a, a factory or an office or whatever, and rent it and start their business up. They have to go to the local government. They have to ask for permission. They have to pay a fee. And then if the government decides, and this isn't a fast process, it's not like it's 72 hours or something like that. It's a much longer process. If the government doesn't give them permission, they are not allowed to start their business. They're, they're not allowed to do that. It, they have to have written permission from their government before they can start a business. I mean, like, like that's a basic of freedom. If, if these Chinese government officials aren't going to allow a basic humanitarian, I know rights don't exist, but a basic human thing like that, if they're not going to let people start a business up without having written permission first, disgusting. Just disgusting. Anti-human. Anti-humanitarian. Horrible. And speaking of horrible, number five, when a, a young man in China, sometimes young ladies as well, when they reach a certain age, they are required by their government military to go in and sign up and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm available. If you need me to fight your wars for you, um, I am here and available to do it. They have to make that move. Whether it's peacetime or war, they have to sign up with the government. What if the kid is a pacifist? What if they're at that point in their life where they're like, you know, I don't think war is a good idea. And maybe it's out of just this, this I don't know, this woke liberal thing. Or maybe it's a deeply thought out moral position. Who knows why? But if they decided they didn't want to be involved in that, they don't have that option. They have to go sign up. Horrible. Now, of course, when they're they're told to do this, there's not much fuss that the people have. People think they're being patriotic or nationalistic or whatever. Uh, and, and this comes from number six. The Chinese government feeds their subjects a bunch of junk, a bunch of propaganda, a bunch of things that are maybe truths that are twisted or pure out and out lies propaganda. Where China is the, you know, is the leading nation in blah, blah. But they're not necessarily in that area. And they have all this propaganda that makes the people really, truly believe it. Now, this isn't coming from the government official marching up and down the road with a bullhorn. They're sending it out through their press and, and that kind of thing. But if you walk up to the average Chinese citizen, and I'm not saying some idiot who doesn't know anything, some gullible moron. No, I'm talking the average intelligent Chinese citizen. You walk up to them and you ask them what they think about China and what they think about the United States and Saudi Arabia and Israel and, and a, a number of countries. Their response, by and large, is going to be that, oh, China really has it going on. You know, we're we're producing great stuff and our leaders are great and and we're a great nation and, and you know, long live China and, and I guess not God bless China, but, you know, we really think China is just great. And, and this spirit of, of patriotism, nationalism, they aren't just faking it. They honestly, really, truly believe. And, and they haven't actually sat down and looked up the numbers and said, okay, infant mortality, um, ability to do algebra, or whatever it is. They haven't actually looked at the statistics around the world. They just assume from all this propaganda they've received that China is a whole, hey, number one, or whatever, however they would say it. And I find that kind of accent thing to be racist, but that's how it's often said. So I repeated it in that way for that reason. Now, something else that I don't like about the Chinese government is, is I can kind of see some people argue, hey, there's a landmass with a bunch of people in it. They're worried about somebody else coming in and attacking them. They need to have a way to defend their, their geographical area from, from bad countries who would come and attack them. Okay, I can kind of, I'll entertain that argument and, and we can have a discussion. But it goes so far beyond that with these Chinese heathens. And when I say heathens, a lot of them don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or even God. They don't even believe in the existence of one or more gods. They are complete heathens. And 
this is their, I don't know, their, their average person, uh, their average person holds this opinion. Okay, and I went off on a little tangent there, but what I'm getting at is this this average person in China isn't even bothered that their government has military bases and ships and they have these outreach centers all over the world, other countries, not just China. It's not like they're just stationed around the borders to make sure that their people can stay safe if, the, if Genghis Khan comes back or something. Like, this is them out reaching out, trying to take over other countries. Now, this is a history that they have had. Hundreds, thousands of years, they've been doing this, and people have come and tried to take them over, and sometimes successful, sometimes not. But they're actually out there thinking that it's okay to go beyond just standing tall and brave at the threshold and saying, no, people who would you know do us harm, you can't come in here. They're not even just saying that. They are actually going out into other countries and have been for hundreds, thousands of years. That isn't right. And I think any human being who kind of looks at things can say, yeah, that that isn't cool, Chinese government. And number eight on my list of things I'm upset with the Chinese government about and that I kind of look down on them about, there's this basic human idea that that you're a free human being, you go out, you create something, and, and you get the results of it. So if you work hard, you can make some money, and you get to keep your money. It belongs to you. In China, in Communist Party-controlled China, when a person, an entrepreneur, goes out and makes money, and they have loosened it up because they know they needed the free market, that's kind of just a basic economic thing, so they've given it a try and relaxed things over the last 20, 30 years. As this entrepreneur goes out, works really hard, and makes money, let's say they make $100,000 equivalent, the Chinese government steps in and takes a portion of that from the person. They don't say, hey, you know, we're trying to guard the borders and have roads and this, will you please donate? Not in China. And you've seen the videos of the, the men and the women marching lockstep, just this this Hitler-like, Mao-like, uh, I don't know, just this pro-state, horrible, horrible military uh, complex kind of thing. The In China, they take, and they will take it all the way to the top, they take these people's money. They take this money from people, whether the people want it or not, and then they say to the people, and a bunch of them, are so brainwashed, they go for it. But the Chinese government will go to the people and they will say, hey, Mr. Li, you have to pay this money because it's part of having a military and roads and all of this stuff. Now, never mind if Li says, you know, I don't really go for that. I'm, I'm going to keep my own property. Nope, government won't allow it. It's oppressive, it's horrible. And, and what's, I guess, weird... Uh, about this number eight and all the things on my list is that this is happening now. This isn't like, you know, we look back and we see the, the footage from uh, 80 years ago. Uh, we see stuff happening in, in Germany when Hitler was in charge. And we're like, well, that was a different time. And if I had been alive then, I would have let that happen. No, this is happening now. And nobody is saying, hey, I want to buy an airplane ticket, get over to China and try to talk sense into the government, try to talk sense into the people. And I know talking to the government, trying to speak truth to power doesn't work, but we're not upset about this. As other citizens of the world, we think it's perfectly fine for Mr. Lee to go and bust it and work that hard and be that innovative and, and create, create such value, and then have some people come and just take it from him against his will because it's his duty to pay them. Disgusting. Just disgusting. This is this is the Chinese government that I'm talking about. Okay, and so you're thinking, how powerful is the government? At least they kind of let people go about and live their lives and do their thing, right? Nope. You want to talk about a surveillance state. China has all of these technological things in place. They are able to, to find out how much money the people are spending. So I will use Mr. Lee as an example again. Mr. Lee goes out and makes a $2,000 purchase on his credit card. Government knows. 
They are able to trace that and track that, and they'll contact the company. The company will voluntarily, because they know what the next step would be, will voluntarily say, yep, Mr. Lee purchased a, uh, I don't know, a, a fancy new suit for $2,000. This is where he bought it, and now the government knows. Now, of course, who really cares if their government knows that they bought a new suit? But this goes for every bit of money exchanged. This even goes for conversations that don't have anything to do with money. If, if Mr. Lee tried to call his buddy across the country and say, hey, man, uh, I, I saw this video on Anarchast and, and I saw these nine things that really kind of suck about the government here in China. What can we do to help get our course back as, as free people in this awesome country? What can we do to fix things so we're not the laughing stock? Nope. That phone call? Their government has this policy where they want to record everything. Now, they're not paying attention to every word said, but they're recording it and they're saving it. That's their policy. They have a massive infrastructure to achieve this, this whole citizen spy program. I mean, big buildings. I'm talking the size of the Utah Data Center. I mean, huge facilities where they're spying on citizens. And, and there isn't this just ability to say, hey, I have a right to privacy. I'm going to talk with my friends about what I want to talk about. And the government's not going to know. You know, we're going to have this phone call, this internet Zoom meeting or whatever. Nope. All tracked. Uh, or if it's not tracked, it's at least recorded by the government. They know who your friends are. They know who you contact the most. The Chinese citizen is not free. So those are the nine things. And there are many more. But those are nine things that are kind of toward the top of my long, long list of things that I just don't like, don't respect about the Chinese government. And sorry if I'm being racist by saying negative things about China, but I, I hear a lot of people doing it, and I wanted to jump in and say this as well. Now, there's something that I, I noticed as I was making this list of all these horrible, disgusting things. Patrick, uh did you notice something peculiar about this list? <laughs> okay, so I just got to the end of editing this video. <laughs> yes, I noticed something a little peculiar about the list. I, <clears throat> I, the whole time I was listening to it, I was thinking about this meme. Shepard, thanks for doing that. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you go check out Shepard's channels. Links in the description.